ToyTractorTimes.com is at the 2015 Lafayette Farm Toy Show in Indianapolis, Indiana. We've got Chris Steve here who has uh, been at the show a couple years now with some different displays. Uh, he's kind of famous for doing Oklahoma red dirt farms and ranches and uh, we've got another red dirt farm here this year. Yeah, this is the uh, this would be the neighbor's place to the early farms that everybody's seen me do so much of. He's one of the uh, head professors of agriculture at Oklahoma State University so there's just work truck that he gets to take home. Um, basic operation is the family farm's name is Johnson, it's Professor Johnson. They do some uh, wheat, beans, uh, corn, and they actually do some peanuts as well. Um, uh, this would be early springtime as such. They're putting in some summer wheat over there. They got a 16 row corn planter. Um, their combining is all done by early farms now that they've upgraded and have the Case IH and the Gleaner. So they had a 9600, but they've since got rid of it. Um, as you come around, the, the house was done by Vicki Peterson. I detailed it up a little bit, added the brick and such. And, um, the trees are mine, out of brass, like the ones I did for Jason's display. Um, these were the prototypes, since wanted to use them. It's got a 3D printed pool on the pack, on the back. And we also got, got the uh, yeah, got the got the antenna and the satellite dish. A lot of people in Oklahoma have satellite. But the problem is when it gets stormy, the thing loses signal. So you still want an antenna so you can listen to the weatherman. Air conditioner unit. Yeah. Uh, also, you have the uh, flag up here. Yeah. Top of the pole. And those are I've actually got the ones so I can change it out so whatever the wind's doing. It was a neat set I found from Code 3 that really worked out cool. Um, as we come along, the Quonset Hut was built by Tony Dixon out of Iowa. It's a very nice piece, rounded, and he weathered it up and such. And the roof comes off so you can detail the inside of it. There's a uh, peanut inverter in there, digger and inverter that was built by Gordy Schultz. Um, something I played with a little bit more on this was rusting some of the equipment up. Some has been restored and some has been really taken care of, but other pieces like the uh, 4055 on the baler, it's probably got 10,000 hours on it and taking a beating. Some of the neat pieces that in this is the uh, got a 3020 LP hooked to a uh, 338 baler that's got a got the direct drop style in the back because they use a do AZ hay machine to pick up the bales and you don't have to even have a quarter turn with them, it just drops them straight down. Um, now, can you show us the car here in the back too? Yeah. That's what I call my private Malone project. That's a uh, the guy's got a Corvette that he takes to car shows and such and um, so that it stays clean in the shop he's got a tarp for it that tarp does come off so that he can be driven but built the tarp out of just uh, uh, basically a paper mache style with uh, some tissue paper um, works real nice I think for a lot of you guys out there who are wanting to do a different detail for like a baler and such you don't have to go to quite the detail you always had you can just make a tarp for it to protect the knotters and a nice Ertl one would do the job. Um, we come around, this is obviously hay field. Got a uh, 7800 on the uh, uh, 835 mower conditioner. Christian Oyster did the mower conditioner up for me. Um, I detail her a little bit from there. The farm's got an old gin pole truck that they picked up in an auction or something. They use when things get stuck or they need to move stuff around the farm. Um, got the main chore tractor. It's a 4020 LP. Loader works. It's got all the lines run on it. It's a western style with just the uh, straight draw bar on the rear. And that probably was somebody's main tractor. One, probably, one and it's still, it, it, being LP and even in the winter time, it's still the main one that gets used around here because she starts every time. Um, and anybody that's worked on an LP tractor will tell you as rough as that looks, so you open up the engine compartment and the motor looks like the day it was manufactured because LP burns so clean. One of the neat pieces on this that is a tractor that's used for the peanut equipment is a uh, 8650. Um, it's one I'm kind of shocked Ertl hasn't made yet, but it's a nice piece to play with a little bit. In the farm. You've got the uh, duels over here for it. Yeah, I got well. the duels to pair that up. Also got a set of duels that slide on to the uh, 7800 because that's a, another, that's a, one of their newer tractors that they picked up uh, for just doing general purpose stuff. The farm raises them, head of cattle. The professor was originally from the Lexington, Kentucky area and really liked the black style fence they do over there, so all the fencing's done in what I call the Kentucky style black. They're raising Napoleon cattle, um, kind of a different breed that's like a shorthorn that produces both good meat and good milk. Um, so they're doing some experiments with those in warm climates. Uh, the bulls just in here, all the cows and uh, the calves and such would be out on wheat pasture this time of year. Pens are all laid out. Justin Miller did the uh, 
did the uh, panels for me. We had the nice beef display at Nationals this year. Got that laid out so we can work calves through the, the loadout and the squeeze shooter from Scratch Cast. Um, some of the gates on here are mine. Some of them are from Eric Peterson. And a lot of them are the new Tractor Fab one that's actually real easy to use. And put a couple pieces on and gives you some real nice gates so you don't have to deal with the hurdles anymore. Now is this some solar panels up on top yeah, of this? Yeah, he got a grant to try some panels. For right now, they got a few of them. Eventually, the whole roof will be covered in it. Um, it's uh, you're seeing more and more of that. Of course, it get a lot of good sun in Oklahoma, so it uh, the whole back of the barn it doesn't affect anything and it'll make a little extra income for them. There is a couple pumps on, like all of them. So the oil fields have got some pump jacks on them. Um, some of the neat pieces on this one that a different Kerry G calls himself the dogs on our forum built me the nice 63 33 uh, 31 foot land finisher um, got it hooked to a uh, 93 92 20 or 93 20 I can't remember what I think yeah 92 20 that was actually Hector Matthews kit that I put together that, I'm real proud with how that turned out um, farm does run some big horsepower two-wheel drives got a 48 40 in the barn and a 49 60. Um, got a couple, he runs Ford straight grain trucks. Uh, I did the body, or did the uh, trucks and stuff. Tony Dixon made the bodies for me, and they do have, they got Rock and H's voice on them. Looking forward to when uh, uh, Top Shelf Replica comes out with the new little Louisville so I can have a full set of the three of them together. Well, that's a nice lineup of. Uh John Deere iron horse. Yeah, there's a lot of people shocked that I got this much green on a display that I did. Um, you even got a the peanut harvester inside. Yeah, that. that's another Gordy piece. It's a nice peanut combine. I weathered her up a little bit. And, um, out here I got the beautiful 9600 drill that everybody's been staring at that Chris Putman up in Canada did for me. Hooked to an 8960. Now is that 60 feet wide? That's a 60 foot drill, yep. That's a big machine. Yep. And he's got it all laid out so it can be tilted up and it's got the road hitch on it so it can be pulled down the road sideways the way it is. Got a Kill Bros 450 with a uh, Kill Bros seed auger on it. The cart was an older one they had around the farm and they just recently converted it to a seed auger. It does work. It's got Jensen's nice little 3D printed pump on it. Um, and then did up the little Ford fertilizer truck and, um, for it so you can fill the seed So you got some, planters. some bags in there? And yeah. Yeah, got some dry mix and such. Now, what, uh, are they just putting like liquid uh, starter on there on the yeah, back I of the tank? So, yeah, that's that's a very nice piece that Chris uh, did. One of my favorite pieces. That was another reason why this display got built was just to just to show off the toy that he'd done for me. A lot of people ask me how I'm able to get some of the best builders in the world to build for me, and the answer is, guys, have a nice display. I mean, they will, you know, they're always happy to see the pictures of the. the product that they've done for you on your display. And, yeah, the, another Ford truck, really nice uh, yep. matchup with the Kilbros. Big 8960 up front. Yeah. Of course it's Oklahoma so we got the storm shelter and I wanted to ask about the corn planter. I've seen you early talking with people. I think it raises and lowers. And yeah. The, you've also got the hitch on the back. Do they put liquid down, uh, pull um, something behind it? Or? It's set up so that they could pull one behind it. Uh, we haven't got one yet, so that's probably what they'll eventually adopt to. But it uh, basically was a spec cast one that I tore a couple of them apart. Like I said, the road gear does go up and down, both on the sides and the fronts. She does open up and... Flex the way she should. And drop her down. And put in 16 rows at one time. Some very nice looking custom pieces. Now I've uh, got the. You were saying the the tornado shelter here yeah, in the backyard. The tornado shelter just off the backyard, the back porch. Um, a new little 3D printed John Deere five wheeler that Grandma probably has for running out and bringing lunch and such. Good old AMT from the late 80s. Yeah. Now these trees um, are something that, that you've made to give a little more height than what the model shops offer. Yeah, the problem we've had with ours is, you know, we're kind of between O and, and HO, and so yeah, we've been wanting to make some more realistic trees that are actually eight to nine inches tall. Um, that one's actually, I think, at 11. But yeah, it's, it's a challenge, but they're not too bad to do. You take some copper wire and just start spinning and soldering and then Put a little glue on it and start playing with whatever. These are actually got a product from Senior Express called Super Leaf on them. That's uh, fun to play with. 
But it's, like I said, pretty simple one. It was just like it's a neighbor's place. Early Farms runs all red iron, and this one runs all green. So you always got the good neighbor battles back and forth on which is better. It's good. I, I like the swimming pool, though. Actual yeah. water sitting in it. And with the barbecue and yeah. everything on the deck. Well, Chris, thanks for bringing another great display out to the show. I know people Appreciate always in, enjoy seeing it, and uh, we look forward to see what you dream up next. <laughs> we'll see if Dawn lets me. <laughs> <laughs>